There is no greater decision that you will make in your life bigger than deciding if you're going to remain single or be in a relationship. It's the biggest decision you have to make. Why? Because it's the number one cause of stress in life. Relationships are your biggest burden. They may have some blessings, but they destroy lives. In this video, I'm going to share with you the top three reasons why you should stay single. Number uno, numero, money, financially. It is cheaper to stay single. If you like the money bag emoji, if you like keeping your money, then stay single. Because what I can tell you is a relationship, whether you're just dating or definitely if you're going to get married, and we already know if you're going to get divorced, a relationship by its very nature means that money is going to come out of your pocket. Shared bank accounts. When you get married, you're going in a business merger, 50% of your assets without a prenup. When you're dating, you're courting. I mean, you're, you're going out to dinner, you're shopping, you're going on vacations. The biggest financial decision you'll make in your life is not if you're going to invest in the stock market. It's not if you're going to buy a multifamily property. The biggest financial decision you'll ever make in your life is if you're going to stay single. Never forget it. And what I can tell you guys, after a long day of work, I want to keep the money I worked for. I don't want to split it. I don't want a shared account. And what I can tell you is financial freedom is at the very top of my list for my life goals. It wasn't always the case. When I was younger, we all have had hormones and people, you know, in their teenage years between 13 and up or so, they want relationships to satisfy their physical needs. And then in their 20s, there's an emotional need. And that's the reason number two. Reason number two is to stay single is because emotionally, you say, Sam, hold up. I want to be in a relationship because I want emotional support. <laughs> you know, the people who are emotionally devastated people in a relationship. I am happier than 99% of people that are in a relationship. That's truth. And if I look back at my life, I've been more emotionally stable when I've been single. If you look at your life, chances are you have been more emotionally healthy when you've been single. So if you say to myself, Sam, well, I don't care about your reason, number one, to be single because I'm a millionaire or I don't really care about money as much as you. I want to be in a relationship because I want emotional support. Then I throw right back in your face. Oh, yeah. Look at the people in your life, your friends, your family, society. Look at their emotional stability. Are they taking prescription pills just to be stable? Are they drinking alcohol just to be stable? Are they smoking weed? Are they living a destructive life because they're emotionally distraught? Chances are, I just 100 emojied the reason number two to stay single. Your emotional well-being, stay single. You're pulling out your hair or you're losing weight. I remember going through a, a tough relationship. I couldn't eat. I was so stressed out. Guys, I could take on more work, more stress at work. I can deal with more stress in society because I don't have to come home and deal with someone else. I see my mom deal with my sister, two women. Okay, All you people out there that want to have a, 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 a child just because you think they're going to love you, huh? Wait till you have a child, okay? And especially daughter. Wait till you have a daughter. <laughs> yep. They always say you can tell a man by how he treats his mother. I can tell you, you can tell a woman by how she treats her mother, okay? Oh, yeah. Big time. And what I can tell you is not good, okay? Very much not good. What's the number three reason, Nomad? The number three reason 
to remain single is your freedom. Women fought centuries in America, the land of freedom. <laughs> America's funny like that. The biggest patriot in America is Donald Trump. He dodged the draft because he had a rich father. That's true. And he's now the biggest supporter of the military. That's funny. One of America's past interesting hypocrisies is for many years, most of America's existence, women and minorities were not given equal rights, weren't allowed to vote, weren't allowed to speak up. And in the past generation or so, that's changed. Okay, And now women can work, they can make money, they can do whatever, they're treated in most instances the same. You've gotten your freedom. Now, you want to go back to give that up, and every time you're in a relationship, you give up freedom. There's no way a man or a woman or transgender. There's no way you're going to be in a relationship and have maximum freedom. Give me an example, Nomad. Okay. You're in your car. You're driving down I-95 because you have decided that you want to go to Florida in the winter. Okay. I'm single. I can do that. However, now you add you're in a relationship and you're driving now I-95 south in a class C to go see Mike Reed, but your person you're in a relationship with, they said, no, no, I want to go back to my family in New Jersey. No, 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 I don't want to go to uh, Florida. There's too many sharks. What are you going to do? You're going to have to compromise. You're going to have to go back. As a single person, you, you you got your own choices. You're free. Rusty has been divorced three times, twice to the same woman. Mike Reese talking about another YouTuber. I know another YouTuber. He's been divorced three times, twice to the same woman. Why? Couldn't live with each other. They financially destroyed each other, emotionally destroyed each other, and there was no freedom. What are the top three reasons to stay single? Financial stability, emotional stability, and maximum freedom. You say, Sam, I hear you. I still want to get in a relationship. I knew an overweight Indian woman from central New Jersey. Okay, She didn't have a job, still not working. You know the type of people, they were unemployed before the coronavirus. Then the coronavirus came and they blamed the coronavirus on still being unemployed. Lazy people. Lazy. Okay. Don't make excuses. So then she tells me she wants to have a family and she hates my videos. Okay. Because I preach stay single and not everyone wants to live like you. Well, one is. If you want a relationship and you're not working and you want children, how are you going to support them? And if, you, if you're not happy with yourself, how is someone else going to give you emotional stability? See, I, I see it on both sides. I see men and women, they seek their emotional happiness in someone else. And then when that other person lets them down, then they're distraught. Then they become men going their own way or they become a bitter woman. Every time you put your happiness in someone else's hands, they'll drop it. So if you're looking for someone else to make you happy, why can't you make yourself happy? And if you hate yourself, are you the reason the saying misery loves company? You know, I brought up uh, the Indian woman because, from my understanding, she told me culturally there's a lot of arranged marriage. I dated an Asian woman, and, and she told me the same thing. My grandparents came from Italy, and in that culture, you saw it too with the coronavirus, a lot of the families, they live together, and it's very much family-orientated. My grandmother came to America, and I asked her on her deathbed, okay, what was your biggest regret? Because she was brought up in the, you know, kind of like the Italian culture where she wasn't really Americanized. And she said, Sam, well, my biggest regret was we came to America to be free and I never got my driver's license. And she said that a driver's license gives you a lot of freedom. She goes, my whole life I had to depend on my husband, which was my grandfather, for everything, for to drive here. Drive. Now, she went to the corner store, so, you know, walk there or whatever, but freedom. Do you want to depend on people? Can you depend on yourself? 
You know, and if you did come to America for a freer, better life, or wherever you're at, I mean, I know people watch this from all over the world, but I think that's very interesting. Well, why do you want to go back in bondage? I always thought it was interesting in the Bible that the Israelites, it was the opening story of the Bible, the Israelites, they were enslaved in Egypt and they wanted their freedom. And they eventually left Egypt, but halfway to the promised land, they said, fuck this. We're going to die in this wilderness. We want to go back to slavery. So you say, why would anyone want to go back to slavery? Because they said, well, at least we knew what we could get something to eat and we had a routine and we knew we wouldn't just have to figure out our own life. See, that's an interesting thing. When, when you only have yourself to blame because you're completely free, th does that encourage you or does that scare you? Sometimes freedom is very scary to people because then they got to be accountable. So like if you live with your mom, you can blame your mom. If you, you can blame your spouse, you can blame your lover. They didn't tell me this. They didn't tell me that. Well, guys, who's making you stay in that relationship? Why do they still have your number? Why didn't you change your number? Do you really want freedom? What are the top three reasons to stay single? Number one, financially, it's a smarter decision. There, an index fund can never beat singleness. I, if you stay single, my membership paid for itself in one second. The next is emotional stability. Guys, look on YouTube. Look anywhere in society. People are emotionally unstable. Number three is freedom. People say they want freedom. People sacrifice a lot to get freedom. And then they give it right back up. They get a divorce and then they get right back into another relationship. Stay single. That's my advice. Mike Reed, I love you, man. What I tell you is this. I think you should experience relationships, experience love, but I think you're also going to find out it's overrated. All right, that's true. Love is, is, you could say like the Bible says love is the greatest gift. Well, the Bible says stay single. Jesus and Paul the apostle said stay single. Jesus said, even in heaven, there won't be marriage. <laughs> you didn't even read the Bible. Someone asked Jesus, if someone gets married two times, because supposedly you could get remarried if your spouse died. He goes, in heaven, who will be that person's husband or wife? Jesus said to them, your, your understanding of heaven is so small. It's not gonna, there's not going to be marriage in heaven. And when they pressed Jesus on after he said all these things, are you saying it's better to be single? He goes, yes, but not many people can accept this. Jesus said, never take a vow. What is the first thing you do when you get married? You take vows. People are committing blasphemy left and right. And they're religious. Jesse O. All right, we're going to go all live comments. Shout out to Mike Reed, Jesse O, my members. Guys. You get rid of your storage unit, you stay single. My membership prepaid for itself, got the value back for it within 10 years. <laughs> Guys, I'm saving you a lot of money. All right, let's take out Drish break. Thank you, Jesse O. Thank you, Mike. Click the thumbs up if you're watching the replay. Uh, Mike, uh, again, says, Sammy, Rusty is getting a classy I saw it because he's single and free. Well, like I said, he's been divorced twice, married the same woman. Uh, well, he's been divorced three times, married the same woman twice. Um, and he was basically living in poverty, if you watch his first YouTube video, on about $1,200 Social Security. That's the average Social Security in America. He was living in poverty. He had a beat up. He didn't, you know, I don't know if you ever saw his first video, his first RV. It was a beat up RV. He had a used Prius. And it wasn't until his YouTube channel got monetized and he started to capitalize off it until he started to get out of poverty, Okay. And then he started to upgrade his RVs, upgrade his vehicles, now, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then he sold his home bases because the only time you make money on property is when you sell it. That's it. 
And for Rusty, he knows he's close to the average life expectancy. What is the average life expectancy? 78. He's 75. So for him, he cashed out all the equity in his property. He's buying a depreciating asset because he's going to die soon. And he's just trying to live his life until he can't live on his own terms anymore. So I could understand his perspective. It wouldn't be what I, I would do as a 40-year-old man. I'm trying to be as efficient as possible, keep all my streams of revenue open. I don't want to eliminate DoorDash or anything yet because I'm not at retirement age. I'm not at Social Security age. And as I get older, I will close some of those options and just focus on maximum enjoyment and comfort. But a Class C doesn't inspire me, but I know it inspires you. You have to look at your age, your financial circumstance, and your life goals. I want to retire early, keep all my avenues of revenue open, and maximize efficiency and freedom. He is trying to live in maximum comfort because he's close to death. He'll spend some of his money because he ain't going to take it with him. And that's his different lifestyle because of his different reasons. Brand new 60K. Yeah, I don't like the Class Cs, though. He's going to drive it as his regular vehicle. Eventually, he'll get another vehicle because that's, in my opinion, that's not, you ain't going to want to drive that around. Mike Reed, maximize termites, baby. Nah, man. Fumigate that house, man. Again, anyone in Broward County that owns a pest control, get at my man Mike. Give him a big discount. If you're single and if you don't have a storage unit, you can give Mike a big discount on termite extermination. Jesse O, my first ever member. Listen to building. Jesse O says, yeah, definitely scary to be free. It's scarier to be in a relationship when you're unhappy. You say, Sam, I don't like to be lonely. Well, the loneliest you will ever be is in a, in a relationship. That's true. And that's the number two reason to stay single is because you think you're going to get emotional support, but actually your emotions are going to get drained. Your finances are going to get drained. That's the number re one reason to stay single. Your emotional energy is going to get drained. That's the number two reason to stay single. And you're not going to be free. Liz has the greatest class B RV on the market, the Corrado Axion. But she's tied to an area because of an ex-boyfriend. Liz should be the freest bird. She's an independent, intelligent woman. However, she got caught up in the game like me, like a, my other member, Brianna. And now she might as well be in 1940 in America where women can't speak up, women can't vote. Like the Bible says, don't speak up in a church. And now you're wearing like a, 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 a bobbit. You know, you're, you're, you're preparing your drink for your abusive man. And you can't do anything in life. You can't door dash. You, can't, you gotta wait till World War II when they put uh, women to work. Guys, you sacrificed so much for your freedom. You burned your bras. You burned your panties. Why would you go back to the bondage of a relationship? Hell no. I want to tell man, woman, and transgender. The sacrifices have been made for us to be free. So, I don't know why. In my opinion, this is my opinion, okay? Why anyone, okay, in their right mind, and, and I would say over 30, because when you're under 30, it's all about you're lustful and you're not emotionally stable. Your brain doesn't fully develop till 25, and you don't know yourself till 35. So if you, by the grace of God, the Lord spared me, by the grace of God, if you get to your 30s and you're single or you get out of a divorce or you get out of a relationship, why the hell would you go back to Egypt? Why would you go back to bondage? Don't be deceived. Because I'll tell you right now, not good. Uh, just, you know, yeah, definitely scary to be free. So many choices and decisions. How, this is a good question. How do you handle being overwhelmed with indecision? The same way you handle a multiple choice question. The number one thing I learned in school is process of elimination. What does that mean? If you have a problem, example, you're taking a test, you have a problem. It says, you know, what, you know, it's a word problem. You have four choices, A, B, C, and D. What I was always taught is if you're not sure of the answer, if you're indec indecisive, do process of elimination. So out of four possible answers, eliminate the, the most outrageous one. Example, should... Liz, stay single or option A, go back to her boyfriend. Option B, uh, find a new boyfriend. Option three, three, go on Tinder. Option D, get a, a vibrator, put a sock on it, and never get into a relationship again. Well, for me, I would say I go right to option D, but 
For some of you people that are indecisive, she made her say to herself, well, I'm not going on Tinder. I, I don't want to you know, share my life publicly. And then she said to herself, well, I don't want to date anyone else. It's either my ex or no one. And, you know, so you have to process of elimination. That takes time. Let's continue read, Liz. Your points balance the, I don't know how to say this word right, philosophy maybe, that uh, uh, relationship is the path to nirvana. The person who was the head singer in Nirvana committed suicide. He was in a relationship. Guys, are you paying attention? And girls and transgenders? The person who was in the famous rock group Nirvana committed suicide. Relationships caused him more emotional distress. Let's continue. Even if one is in a good relationship, Marilyn Monroe, never date a girl that has a picture of Marilyn Monroe in her room or tattooed on her arm. Megan Fox, very beautiful actress. She's got a picture tattooed of Marilyn Monroe on her inner arm. You say, Sam, who's Marilyn Monroe? I'm a 20-year-old. I don't know that. Guys, she was the Stormy Daniels before Donald Trump. JFK committed adultery on his wife and was banging Marilyn Monroe. So was Frank Sinatra. Guys, they were all over. And the mafia supposedly killed Marin, Marilyn Monroe because she was going to start spilling the beans. And in that time, women couldn't really speak up like that. You were controlled. So even though Marilyn Monroe was very popular, she was very, she was an asset. She was able to sell. But there was a lot of more. It was a lot more of a man's world. Why would you want to go back? I don't want to be controlled by anyone. My mom wrote. I, I, I saw it because she wrote and she said, Sam, when I die, this is what I want read at my funeral. And it's a simple one sentence thing. And she goes, children, I love you very much. I'll always be with you. Never let anyone control you. I'm going to take a hydration break because some of you psychopaths, you got to take notes. You got to take notes. Click that thumbs up. Uh, guys, I'm saving you money on the store June, so I'm staying single. Click the blue join. Thank you to all my members. Love to. We take a hydration break. We're going in the list. Comment. Then my man Mike Reed. Shout out to Jesse. Uh, I'm going to continue on Liz's comment. She goes, even if one is in a good relationship. <laughs> I don't see too many of them. 75% uh, of happiness is the relationship with self. 100%. If you're not happy. Can, does someone else really make you happy or they bother you? I don't know about you, but when my tooth hurts or when my back hurts, I don't want someone else in the same house as me. Like you may say you're feeling sexy. You want someone to caress you. You're in a good mood. You want to watch a movie together. But what about when you, you have a broken arm? What about when you got the runs, when you got dookie? What about when, when you're on your period and bloated? Guys, what about when you're going through mental stress? Do you want someone saying, oh, how are you doing? Are you okay? Can I do? I don't want to hear that shit. And I don't want to be ups I don't want to be upset with the person I'm living with. I don't want to be harsh on them. Single for life. You say, Sam, I want someone to take care of me when I'm older. Guys, the caretaker becomes the undertaker. You want a professional caretaker. You don't want your spouse to basically or your lover that wants to pull your plug because they get tired of taking care of you. I've seen it. I've been to the Starbucks in Florida. I saw an old woman come in there every day. And she would share with me the pain of being a caretaker for her husband that for two and a half years need constant round-the-clock care. She was burnt out. Okay? Burnt out. She would come to Starbucks. She don't even drink coffee. She would come to Starbucks just to get out of the house. You don't see this. Ed Sherman doesn't show you this in his song that even when your knees buckle, I want to love you. No, he don't tell you that part. Because he didn't live enough life. Stay single. Keep your money bag, keep your emotions, and keep your freedom. The top three reasons to stay single. Let's continue to eat. Oh, yeah, and I just want to add, she said 75% of happiness is on your own. I'd say 100%. Don't forget, sex is only 5% of the relationship. So 95% of the relationship is work. 5% sex, bad ratio. Uh, let's continue to eat. Marguerite, laughing good. Yeah, I'm going to tent. 
this bitch enlisted. Yeah, I'm not mad at that. Liquidate your assets because you don't make money on your house till you sell your house. Okay. And if you're single, you decide when you sell. If you're in a relationship, who decides? Guys, to get two people to agree, almost impossible. And if you got out of a marriage and now you're living with a woman, I know a guy who it is, and he's paying rent, but he's not on the mortgage, he's not on the deed, he's going to get screwed. You over there, you're doing renovations. You don't own half that house. You're going to get screwed. Guys, I don't even want to play that game. I don't want to be in business with anyone. Like when I see Shark Tank, Shark Tank is a, a TV series in America. I think they played around the world. You got Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful. You got Mark Cuban. You got all these guys. And people go there with an idea to, to get money to invest in their company because they're young entrepreneurs. And what happens is you are inviting someone else in your life because once they give you money, it comes with conditions. So what really makes me go crazy is when I see an entrepreneur say, you know what? I would like two sharks in on the deal. Why would you want to add another person, another layer of bureaucracy. Every time you add another investor in your life, you give away equity in your company and you add emotional stress. The less people to make a decision, the more freer, the quicker, the more I like in and out. I like liquidity. Okay. I'm not, I don't like hard assets. I don't like houses. I don't like gold. I don't like even mutual funds. I like in and out. That's me. I'm not saying it's for everyone. That's for me. Let's continue. Uh, Mike Reed, get the hell out of Dodge. 100 emoji. He's talking to Liz. Mike Reed, you're a good man, good member. Liz. Yeah. Corrado. Yeah. Kept my focus on nomad life and not the boy. It's not easy. I don't want to sit here on a high altar and tell you guys it's very easy. A relationship almost destroyed my life, a few of them. And I would have no one else to blame but myself. And when I was young, hormones, when I was in my late 20s, emotional, I was emotionally not mature enough. It was only by the grace of God and through hard work of self-care, coming to learn myself, getting my life in order financially, emotionally, physically, loving myself. It was only through those hard work moments that I got to a point where I said, shit, I'm happier by myself. I'm richer. I'm more emotionally stable. I can do whatever I want. Why would I want to give that up? Through sickness and health? Till death do you part? No, thank you. So that's my opinion. Let's continue. Liz, uh, she goes, I kept my focus on the nomad life, not the boy. Left San Fran and on the road, fire a month. Uh, a loving full time in the Corrado. Good job. Was telling others about motivation I get from inspiration. Oh no, man! Heart emoji, Liz. I love you. You, I'm trying to tell you right now, you're doing great. And that Corrado Axion, actually, that Class B RV, the value probably went up. It didn't depreciate. So you're an up. You're an actually you're in an appreciating asset right now. You have maximum freedom. You got great fuel efficiency for a, a fully self-contained RV. You're doing great, Liz. In my book, as long as you don't let someone fuck up your life, you're doing great. Jesse O. One of my worst fears is to be stuck as a caretaker. Damn it, Jesse O. Fire emoji to you. You're speaking to my heart on this one. She goes, one of my worst fears, me too, is to be stuck as a caretaker to someone I love. It'll destroy that relationship. I told my father, I will find a good assistant living. Yep. When he gets old, of course, he said no, laughing. Yeah. Until you got to change his diapers every day and you're basically giving him the uh, Randy Macho Man Savage elbow. You know, like you change his diaper, you also give him the elbow because you get frustrated. Guys, we're not meant to, we can't have a full-time job, be a caretaker, uh, be a YouTuber. You can't, you can't, like, there's one guy from Florida. Oh, I won't say his name. Okay. He does videos about Florida. Okay. And he he was getting a lot of views because he appeals to the masses. He appears to he appeals to the married, conservative, uh, you know, type people. 
the Trumpers, the I'm going to move from a liberal state where I made all my money, I'm going to move to a conservative state and retire. So you can never grow up in a conservative state and retire anywhere because, guys, you all the money's coming from the liberal states. Never forget that, okay? They bash the liberal states a little bit. But, guys, without the liberals coming to Florida, guys, it'd be a farmland. And the government subsidized farmers. Never forget that. They're welfare queens. So, bottom line, guys. This one YouTuber who was appealing to the masses, he couldn't keep doing videos because he had a family with a wife that she had her own problems, I don't even want to say, and two kids, they were trying to figure out life, told him, you don't have the extra capacity to do YouTube, he would have been making good money, but he can't be consistent. Why do people call out of work? They're emotionally distraught from their relationship. I can guarantee you. The, re the number one reason people call out of work is not because they're trying to avoid responsibility. There's too much stress at home and they can't deal with it. Guys, when I, when, I, when I was very young in my 20s, there was a time I had to call out of work because I was going through a breakup. I wasn't emotionally strong enough to get to work. Guys, the number one reason to stay single is because screw up your money bag. Then it's going to screw up your emotions and you're not going to have freedom. The only people that dislike this message are the same people that dis dislike Jesus because Jesus told you to stay single. Jesus told you that in heaven there won't be marriage. You didn't listen to Jesus. You didn't listen to me. You didn't, you didn't listen to anyone. Okay. What you decided to do was celebrate Taco Tuesday. Okay. And now the fiery hell of the burdens of this world are crawling down your spine. And guys, not good. Sam, all these married guys at work <laughs> always have the shit coming out of, <laughs> yeah, out of their mouths about women and will never talk in front of their wives. Well, also, I work with some great smart women, and I can tell you the same thing from their perspective. They got to deal with their husbands. So I'm very fair. Women and men have to deal with this. So if you're a working woman or a working man or whatever, why would you want to deal with stress at work and at home? I don't. I want to be single for life. I don't care how beautiful, how intelligent, how evenly yoked. That's the biggest scam. I can tell you this. You're never going to be in sync with someone 100%. Now, there may be some exceptions. I do work with a, one guy. He says he's happily married, been for a long time. I respect this guy. So I'm not going to speak for everyone. I'm speaking for myself. But uh, this is what I want to share with you. Gays are talk. Jesus is right. Thumbs up. <laughs> Amen says the Yacht Club, brother. Gangs to talk. Amen says the Yacht Club. Okay? Love to you, brother. I appreciate you. And what I can tell you is if you're butt ugly and sometimes you ask the Lord, you say, Lord, I know I shouldn't question you, but I can't figure out why I'm butt ugly and there's other people out there that look good. This is what the Lord saith to you. I want you to look at the good looking people and look at their life. Look at Jennifer Lopez. She'd been divorced three times. Look at Halle Berry, been divorced. Look at Megan Fox, who's got a tattoo of, of uh, Marilyn Monroe. She just committed adultery on her husband after three children. Look at Donald Trump. He banged Stormy Daniels while his wife was pregnant. Look at Bill Clinton. He was getting a blowjob while Hillary was trying to set up her run in 2020. Look at JFK having sex with Marilyn Monroe while the mafia was covering it up. Mary Magdalene from the Bible was a prostitute hanging out with Jesus. Shout out to my man, Team Vasectomy. He likes prostitutes. But look, guys, I mean, at the age of 40, I have to admit, I feel different than I did at 20. I feel different than I did at 25 or even 30. Again, the human brain does not fully develop till 25. You don't really know yourself till 35. And for most people, by the age of 35, they wake up, they got a mortgage, they got two kids, and they don't know where to go from here. I can't speak to all that. All I can speak to the people who are not entangled yet. The people trying to get out of an entanglement, look at Jada Smith and Will Smith. Or anyone out there that 
feel similar in the mindset. If you don't like to work like that big chick I was telling you about from New Jersey, why would you want a relationship? A relationship is a lot of work. Like if you like, be honest with yourself. You got, look, I'm lazy. You say yourself, say to yourself. Now I, I'm high energy. I'm highly productive. Some people are very lazy. I understand. If you know you're lazy and you don't like to work, why would you want a relationship? It's more work. These are questions you have to ask yourself, and these are questions that keep you living that single happy life. My man, my read, Sam. You and Rusty are the only nomads that show up completely north and south. I love it. I love you, brother. Mike, you've been a great uh, supporter, brother. I appreciate you. and appreciate you watching. Yeah, me and Rusty different. Look, Rusty conservative. He's a Trumper. Okay? And I think that's bullshit because he was living in poverty on Social Security. <laughs> he wasn't into, you know. So, guys, if it wasn't for a government assistance, he would have been destitute. <laughs> so, thank God for Social Security, right? Now, look. Uh, so we're different in our politics. There's no doubt about that. Okay. And he doesn't, you know, he was very anti NFL protesters, even though I disagreed with that. He's, we're, we're different people, but he inspired me. I, we still connect in many ways. And I stopped leaving comments on his channel because I learned as a YouTube creator and as a YouTube watcher, if you disagree with someone, just don't, don't leave a comment. Because I would leave some comments on Rusty Channel and he didn't respond nicely or what I wanted to hear. However, same thing. People leave comments on mine and I may not to them. So guys, only stay around people that you, you click with. There was a girl the other day. She left a comment. She goes, oh, what, you don't want to be challenged? Like, you know, someone questioning you? I said, no, not my personal time. <laughs> Shit, at work or something like that where I'm getting paid for you, challenge me. I'm, I'm, I'm highly productive. I don't want to come home after work and deal with some lazy psychopath on YouTube that doesn't work, challenging me. Hell, and they're not even a member. They're free, cheap as hell. So hell no, don't you? Y'all blocked the bitch. I didn't even respond. You ain't going to challenge me. Oh, fuck it. You ain't got shit to do. You're sitting there thinking of all these questions. Okay? Guys, what do you want from me? Jesse, I read today Trump has been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize by some Norwegian official total disaster. You say, Sam, give me a sales pitch on why I shouldn't vote for Trump. All right. Is the country better off today than it was when he took office? If you say yes, you're unfair in your evaluation. I agree that Biden is brain dead. Okay. I agree that he panders a little bit, but I agree that if Donald Trump was looking at Donald Trump in the in the show The Apprentice, and we had to evaluate him on where the country is four years after taking it, Donald Trump would have fired Donald Trump. That's the truth. And if you can't handle the truth, then like my man Tom Cruise, you go star in a movie. But if Donald Trump was on the show The Apprentice, he would be fired, okay? Because he failed. He failed this country just like he failed in the six casinos that went bankrupt in New Jersey. He made his billions in New York City, not in Kentucky, not in Alabama, not in a conservative state. He made billions in New York City, a democratic, liberal city. And then he went down to the South. He bought a mansion in Palm Beach County, and he did like every other person does. They make their money in a liberal state, and they retire in a tax-free haven. That's the truth. And they don't want to say that. Why? Because there is a racial undertone. There is an aspect of, I want America to be like the 1960s, the 1950s, where women didn't speak up, minorities knew their place, okay? Okay, and these riots, they got to stop, they got to stop. Oh, got to Get the fuck out of here. Come on. Okay. One is, you know what it is. I just broke it down. All right, let's continue. Uh, Sam, my greet. Sam, you got to get your moms to just see if she likes Florida. Screw the family. Thank you, Mike. I, I, I give her the offer every night. I went to see her today. And of course, as soon as I went in there, what was she doing? Arguing with my sister. And I don't get involved in between it anymore. I tell her every night, brother. I do. I'm honest with you. I said, Ma, I'll rent something for six months. Let's just give it a shot. I think about the movie The Postman with, um, who is it? My man from The Bodyguard. 
Who was in the movie The Bodyguard with Whitney Houston? Who was the guy actor? I forgot the guy's name. There's a, a movie called The Postman. And in The Postman, uh, this actor gets this woman pregnant. And he almost has to force her to come with her because she's very indecisive. And But I don't want to push my mother because I, I want to respect her freedom. And I know if I push her too much and if I force her to come down to Florida, she'll be resentful and that's not the right way to do things. I, 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 you have to give people some freedom, but I am trying to push her as long as I'm not, I don't want to manipulate her. I just want to let her know there's other options. Yeah. ESPA, uh, ESP. Good job. Kevin Costler. That's all I was thinking about. Uh, Mike Reed, that's nuts. You got the right to tell your sister to stop messing. Nah, I've been down that road, brother. Brother, I've been down that road. I, I grew up well, my whole life like this, man. And what I can tell you is if I get in the middle, this is what will happen. I'll get myself in trouble. My sister won't change. And my mom, who's an enabler, I'll call it like it is, she will go back to being friends with my sister. Okay? Because that's what happens. A, a mother and a daughter will argue like fucking Trump and Hillary. And then if you get in between... When you leave, they're going to be friends again, and you're going to look like an over-emotional person. So don't, I'm not, I don't get involved, man. I'm counting the days to Florida. I give my mom the option because I love my mother. I thank God for my mother. I don't take my mother for granted. However, I got my health together. I didn't let my mom destroy my life. I ain't going to let my mom. I got to be independent, and if my mom wants help, I'll give her help, but I can't make the decision for it. Yes, uh, Mike says ESP. ESP is here. Shout out to Alaska. Always lurking the one dose. Well, ESP about to get rid of her storage unit. I just saved ESP $200 a month. That pays for the membership for two years. Guys, you get rid of your storage unit, you stay single. There's no way you should ever be destitute. Even if you are a Walmart worker, if you're single with no storage unit, you should always be able to survive. I want you to think about this example. Very powerful example coming up. If you made $50,000 a year, that's about the average American income, $50,000 a year. And if you were in a relationship, you're actually only making about twenty dollars to $25,000 a year. So you're basically working at Walmart. If you work a maintenance job, if you work as a, a nurse, if you work as a dental assistant, if you work as a data entry clerk that's been there for years, you're making $50,000 a year. But if you're in a relationship, you're only making $20,000. you are basically making $15 an hour when you actually deduct the cost of a relationship. And I'm not even including kids. How do you think these people call up Dave Ramsey and they're making six figures, but they got two kids? They, guys, they're fucking basically making $10 an hour. You can make $100,000 a year, but if you're married with two kids, you're making $10 an hour. That's why 80% of the uh, of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. So I done set the captives free. If you stay single and resist the storage unit, which is a waste of money, okay? Guys, I just solved your, your life. I mean, I, guys. I mean, that's valuable. Oh, I got to take out Jason Briggs. I got to take out Jason All right, click the thumbs up. ESP's lurking. Laughing. ESP. Mike Reed, laughing good. Laughter's good for the soul. Just yo. I have downsized my storage unit. Praise the Lord. To the smallest one. Not good enough. I want you to set that damn storage unit on fire. Took me two years while you're making some progress. I'm still not done good. <laughs> not easy to get rid of the last bit. It's easy to brush your teeth. It's hard to floss. Flossing is more important. Gum disease is real. That's the details. It's easy to move stuff from one closet to another. It's hard to totally throw stuff out. But I don't say that in judgment. I say that in my own life observation. I remember standing in my walk-in closet with a pair of silk brand new underwear and about 10 shirts with different colors. And I, I put it in the garbage but like a drug addict, I took it back out of the garbage because I couldn't let go. The storage unit is the emotional example of people who mentally can't go. You have to ask yourself, are you ever going back to that life? I can't answer that for everyone. But I can tell you, 
I'm not going back to having furniture. I'm not going back to having multicolor outfits. I am going to live a minimalistic life to the day I die. I may get an RV lot. I may get an RV. I may do some adjustments, but I'm not going back to anything above a couple hundred square foot max. And whatever, whatever RV or whatever I buy, it's furnished. I'm not, I'm not doing none of that. Now, I'm not saying everyone should do what I do. I'm just saying you have to ask yourself that. Like you have to ask yourself, are you going back to that life? I'm not going back to that life. So that's a very important point. For anyone out there listening that has a storage unit, I want you to take an inventory of everything in that's, that's in that storage unit. And I want you to ask yourself, does anything in that storage unit play a part in my future life? I know it plays a part in your past life. I know you got memorabilia. I know you got things that you wore, that you, you know, you got a wedding dress. But I want to know, okay, this is the sermon part. Get, let, get the lock, yacht club get inspired. I want to know, does anything in that storage unit have a place in your future life? Okay. Does it? Does it? You have to answer that. And don't answer it to please me. But it's answer it to understand yourself. Understanding yourself is the key to all decisions. Having clear goals is the key to all decisions. If you say, Sam, my goal was only to live as a nomad so I could pay off debt and then buy a house in a different state, then that's okay. Which That's your goal. But I want you to know where you're going. I want you to have a vision for your life. Very true. Mike Reed, Sam. This weekend, I am pointing two guns. I am mad at that. I am not that kind of person to even think I can squeeze the trigger. Well, I can tell you this. I know plenty of people that have had guns, legal guns and illegal, and nothing positive ever happened. I don't know anyone that took out a gun, saved their family, and got a Nobel Peace Prize. I know people that ended up in a shoot-up uh, in a strip club. I know people that got pulled over with a gun. And even when it was legal and all that, I still got more trouble than it was worth. So I'm not anti-gun. But for me, how I look at protection is if you're going to have a gun, why don't you have non-lethal rounds? There's plenty of non-lethal protection. Because if you have a gun or if you have a weapon, the whole purpose is to protect yourself and your property. So, it, it, But if you have to, if you insist on having lethal, it's like you're a fucking psycho. I know a guy, he had no job. He moved from Florida to Alabama. The first thing he did was get a, a gun. Not a job, a gun. It's for people who are insecure. It's the small dick syndrome, okay? You don't feel confident about yourself, so you got to go out there and you got to get some lethal shit, okay? You probably got a big pickup truck, you got a big gun, and a small penis. That's true, okay? Am I mad at you? I ain't mad at one, guys. Do what you want, okay? But what I can tell you is I got a small truck, and I'm not insecure, okay? I got the Jeep Renegade, the small fucking SUV, I'm not insecure, so... What I can tell you is this, guys. Do you, okay? Mike Reed. Yep, they got to go. You got to do you, man. That's how I tell you. All right, guys. I gave you the best I got. I hope I gave you that value back. I want to thank all my members. I want to thank Mike Reed. I want to thank Jesse O, my first ever member. ESP Alaska's in the building. Gangster Talk, you know I always appreciate you. I know you're in the background. Liz B. Liz D, excuse me. In the Corrado action, getting away from her boyfriend. Keep going. All I can tell you, Liz, is don't look back. Keep going forward in your life. Love to you and appreciation to you. And thank you for everyone who watched. And uh, again, hopefully my videos help you in some way. Peace.